Hello, this is Mike from Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your 2024 Flagstaff Microlite 22 FBS travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, I want you to leave plenty of room for that awning. On your off campsite, of course, leave room for your slide. But I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. They're going to be behind your tires on your off camp side or driver side of your tow vehicle both your power and water connections so park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite once we arrive and unhook our hitch first thing we do is level our unit unit comes with a power tongue jack night docking light should you arrive at night simply lower or raise the unit until you're level now should you lose power under this rubber stopper right here the smaller of the two hand cranks you got inside will fit on there and get this up and down if you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery post every now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose going down the road. Once we do get our unit level, next thing we do is stabilize it. All four corners of the unit, you got these little scissor stabilizing jacks. Your other hand crank, three quarter inch. Fits on these. You can use an impact gun or a drill gun, run these down, but you don't have far to go, so just use your hand crank. I am going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, and debris, hot black top in the summer, keep it from sinking into that. Good investment, use your 10% off coupon, grab a four pack of those, put them on the ground and run these down just until they're taut. Once it, you have any kind of resistance and it feels like it's going to lift the unit, stop. Remember, we're just trying to uh, stabilize it. We've already got it level. We don't want to change that levelness. Get all four of them down. Once we got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Power cord. Big long uh, 30 amp cord here. We'll plug into a dog bone if you had a 50 amp park. Where these go in now? These will go in, say, 10 o'clock, that light means you got power from your power source. Wiggle that in and then turn it to noon and then put it on your black washer. Now should you uh, need to plug into a 110, at the end of that 30 amp, you can put in this 30 to 15 amp reducer. Got your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting lines in your unit. Always use these because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. City water connections where we'll hook up at campsites. Water pressure regulator, hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Check your hot water heater here and make sure your drain plugs in. Throw some plumber's tape around that, not putty, putty will gum up on you. Get some plumber's tape in there, get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, we can go ahead and turn on our hose. After the hose has been on, we're going to go ahead and open up our slides. Up inside our unit, to the immediate right, is going to be your control panel. Bottom right hand corner, you should slide control. It's going to hit out. The only reason I want to get this slide open is because I want to get in here and be able to get to all of our water lines. Yours didn't necessarily need it, but we'll get in here and open up our sink, shower, bathroom, get the water flowing steady in there, all the air out of the lines, then you can shut them off. Uh, shut them off, you're all set to camp. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping or boondocking as they like to call it. In that case, We will come to the front of the unit. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply fill this with a uh, hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right there. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. Once that's full, go ahead and remove your hose, put this cap back on, and then you'll turn on your water pump whenever you want to utilize that water. Don't turn on your water pump and hook up to the city water. That is already pressurized. All right, let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. Start tonight out here on your off camp side. Here's your docking light for out front. Again, our fresh water. Pass through storage here. There's a spray port hose. I'll show you where to hook that up at. Here's your fresh water drain. 
right there, that big handle there. Going around our slide to our hot water heater. If for some reason this doesn't seem to be working, come out here to see if either one of these are bubbled up. If they are, just simply press them back in. There you reset. Back up here to our docking station again. Your cable is cable, satellite, tank flush. This is where we dump our black tanks when we leave the campsite. City water and antifreeze inlet. Now here's where we dump our black and gray tanks. Back to the unit, you've got a little area for outdoor shower, that spray port hose I showed you will hook on there. Cover for your spare tire. Got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. You're prepped for a backup camera, device you can purchase. Piece goes on here, the other piece goes on the dash of your tow vehicle. Giving you a backup camera for the unit. Accessory hitch and all your tow information for that is right there. Coming over to our campsite, a little porch light, a couple of outdoor speakers, a hood vent for your stove there. You got a flue for your furnace. A couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you're running your furnace, steer clear of this. It does get hot. Over here, 110 and cable for a TV here. You got a hand crank override for your slide there. LP disc quick connect and then over here we've got all right up here is the lip that this griddle and table will fit on there's our legs that fit on this griddle that'll snap on that up here is where you prep for solar you can plug in a solar panel right there and that'll trick and charge your batteries got a cover for your propane that is also on a regulator simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using lefty loose to open go back to it both sides here open them up turns green green means you've got gas again check your battery post every now and then make sure nothing's moving loose and right in here by underneath your propane tanks is your battery disconnect that will disconnect all the battery power to the unit that will come important later when i talk about your carbon monoxide and propane detector that covers the other thing out here let's go take a look on the inside all right coming up inside the unit First thing I always like to point out your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the location of the fire extinguisher in case of an emergency. Again, up to our right is our control panel. Here's where you read the levels of your tanks. Here's your battery charge, awning light, step, interior, and bedroom lights. Here's where you connect your Bluetooth. You can run everything from your phone. Uh, here's where you turn on your water heater here if hooked to a, a gas water heater if hooked to electric it does make a difference choose correctly here's where you turn on your water pump you use potable water here's your tank heater those are just some 12 volt uh pads that are on your tanks to keep them from freezing in inclement weather and then up here is your awning and your awning you only want to run that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that bar if you hold that button down, that will continue to run itself out and run itself up onto itself. So keep an eye on it when you're running it out. Make sure you only run it out as far as you need to. Then over here is a slide control, which we already utilized. As I'm running your on again, I'm going to continue to talk up here about your GoPower solar controller. Whole purpose of this is to keep your solar panels from overcharging your battery. Your only concern is to make sure that you keep it on the type of battery that you have, and that is flooded. Awnings in, I'm going to tell you that slam locks work best when gently slammed. Uh, there is a manual that shows you how to use this. Pretty simple. Um, your sink, you do have a drying rack that will go over that. Pop up power port here with USB N 110s and a micro USB. Over here on your cooktop, this glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Simply turn this to high, hit your spark, and that's how those all light up. Same thing on the oven. Put that to light, hit your spark, and that will light your pilot light for you. No reason to uh, um, 
have to get in there to light the pilot light. You have a panel light here and rock that panel light down. It becomes an oven light. Make sure you put this top down for travel. Light and fan above that. No self-explanatory microwave. Here's your Connex TV. Let me find your remote real quick. <laughs> Located that right inside your cabinet here. When you arrive at the campsite, run a did go in and run a digital channel scan for all your local channels. Down below that. A storage area, desktop, like area, remote for your fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. You can make it brighter or dimmer, but the biggest thing is the heat. Cranking out right now. Um, if you're at a campsite and you're plugged in and it's chilly in the morning or evening, don't waste your propane. Crank this baby up and it'll get it toasty in here in no time. And those remotes are right in your cabinet here. You have your owner's manual, tire pressure monitoring system. I'll send you a separate video from them on how to set that up. Your bed does have storage underneath as well as drawers. One tens up there. Little accent lighting. Um, more charging ports. Here's your inverter. Over here is your sofa. These are completely removable all by this. You can do it in two different spots. Unsnap. And just lift this right out of there. Easy with two hands, but same thing here. Undo that. And you can pull these completely out of there. Which now we've got a recliner. I believe it's pull parachute pull, I call it. Reach in there and pull on that lever. Use your feet to put it back down. Cool little wireless part charging port right here. Set your phone in it. One touch lighting for that. Over here, crank up our air. Our air has a quick dump as well. Put that in cold, put on air. Shut that off, shuts off rather quickly. Now we crank the heat up. As your heat return now you notice when I shut that off that will take a couple minutes to cycle through before it shuts off coming over to our fridge uh, controls for that are all inside the freezer and fridge separate controls below your fridge is your breaker box and fuses handful of 15s 20 couple 40s Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Next to that's your carbon monoxide propane detector. Uh, remember, this is always it's 12 volt, so it's always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, you think you're just going to be gone for the day, not worried about a propane uh, gas alarm being on or running down your battery, use that battery disconnect up front and that'll shut that off. Coming into our bathroom, we do have the 110 with GFCI reset. We've got a hand crank open, power exhaust vent there, four different speeds on that. Your shower, you just want to make sure you have this shower door snap closed for travel. Uh, plumbing, the kitchen and bathroom, here's your access to it. Mostly PEX nowadays, just keep an eye on it, especially if you travel a lot in your RV. Um, you're bouncing this thing down the road, you want to make sure nothing's wiggle loose over time. Well, that about covers everything in here. It's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. Let's start by coming to our control panel and shut off all the interior lights. Then I see any other lights that are on our one touch accent lights, and it was just that one. Now I can turn on interior lights and say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede our slide from coming in. Put some things away and get ready to close it up. All right, we're going to come up here and just hit in. One thing I will note, your bedroom 
curtain over on that side um, right before, when you're opening this up go and make sure that it's clear it doesn't get stuck back behind it I do want you to hear when this is all the way in a little grinding noise does the same thing when it's all the way out all that is is the slide saying I'm all the way in just let go of the button shut off my interior lights and exit the unit on these stairs biggest thing about these whether bringing them up or down you got to make sure this exterior door is open otherwise this is going to catch on it you also have adjustable feet simply press up on this and bring this up and down as you need before you leave the dump station i say that because you're going to want to go in there and watch your uh, levels as you're dumping before you leave the dump station lock and deadbolt lift and turn that handle that's how you want that to go down the road for travel all right if we are out dry camping we're going to bring up our stabilizing jacks get up underneath here and open up that freshwater drain and head on home or to the nearest dump station whatever we're in need of if we are at a campsite we're going to unhook our power our water our cable bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the dump station now if the dump station park accordingly your dump's going to be right behind your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle you got 10 foot hose comes your convenience pack hook that up and pull your sewer outlet handle which is going to be this big black one right here once that sounds like it's no longer draining go inside and look at the level of your black tank it shows empty or close to it come back out here leave that black handle open grab the hose at the dump station and hook up to tank flush put that on there again emphasizing leaving that black handle open turn that on for a good five minutes and let it wash all that nastiness out of your black tank when that's done remove your hose make sure all that washout water you just put in there has drained close your black handle pull your gray handle while my grays are draining go ahead and dump my low point drains so on your campsite corner here it says low point drain you really got to get up under, underneath there to be able to see them and find them and open them up well those are draining if we're done camping for a while hop on over to your hot water heater lift up on this pressure release valve now be careful it's gonna dump some hot water out of there when that's done push that handle back down otherwise your door won't close and then you can pull your drain down there for residual hot water stagnant water out of there when your gray is done close that gray handle grab your sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper hook up your hitch and head on home again thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this microlight for many years to come happy camping